So, you're here to find some horror visual novel recommendations. Welcome, you've come to the right place. Hi, my name is August and I've read quite a lot of visual novels. Now, I could point you towards Higurashi, the classic psychological murder mystery, but that's an easy one. Today, I wanna give you a couple of other horror visual novels that are definitely worth checking out. One, an otherworldly monstrous horror, another one full of crazy delusions, and the last one is an unexpected but personal favorite of mine. Starting with the most infamous one out of all of them, the Lovecraft in horror story that's actually a tragic romance. Saya no Uta. Saya no Uta is renowned for being a terribly messed up visual novel, for it shows how a crippled man descends into madness and commits terrible acts to the people around him, all due to an eldritch abomination beyond your worst nightmares. And to add to the expectation, Saya no Uta was written by Gen Urobuchi, the infamous author known for writing Fate Zero, Psychopaths, and Madoka Magica. Yes, that Urobuchi. I didn't expect anything less, delivering such a horribly brutal title that's actually only about six hours long. Throughout the story, we see the world through Fuminori's eyes, the dreaded hellscape, and the eldritch abomination that he sees. It's not just the premise too, from the horror-esque filters, the ominous yet alluring music, and the POV shots of a hunter stalking its prey before defiling and devouring its body whole, there's a lot to complement the unsettling nature of it all. There's even a censored version for those who would rather not deal with the more explicit, repulsive scene of Sayana Uta. Content, definitely not safe for your average person. Of course, while the whole aesthetic of Sayana Uta is a cursed vibe on its own, the story itself is really unsettling when you take a look at the bigger picture from different perspectives. On one side, we see a man commit incredible acts of violence as he rejects his humanity all for this unspeakable eldritch being. However, on the other side, we see a man lash out against the monsters in his eyes in order to protect his beloved companion in a world where they only have each other. Guess whose perspective we spend the most time in? And what's fun is that Urobuchi spins this narrative so that you actually feel sympathetic towards the main characters. And it works as horrifying as that sounds. Funny enough, despite the repulsive and problematic content, Sayana Uta ended up being some people's gateway visual novel. So what better starter horror recommendation than this one? Just remember, embrace the madness, there's power and love and teamwork, and to always reserve the last bullet for yourself. Next up is a noir mystery horror set in a 1950s Japan. One that tells the tale of a series of murders where young women turn up dead, limbs ripped from their bodies, and wombs torn out. Introducing Kara no Shoujo. How this visual novel depicts its victims is ghastly. You'll be taken into the perspective of the serial murder as the story details his actions and mental state, all while Kara no Shoujo visually and audibly presents the brutally maimed bodies. You'll hear arms being chopped to pieces, legs being sawed off, and read how it feels to tear out intestines and uteruses. It's quite excellently depicted while being very unnerving and sickening as it forces you to watch, especially after bonding with these characters prior. A grim and hollowing aesthetic given Karuna Shoujo's melancholy atmosphere, mature art style, and its ominous standout tracks. Now, I describe all of this as a horror slasher work, but Karuna Shoujo is actually a very subdued murder mystery. You follow Detective Tokusaka Reiji as he investigates the murders, because as it turns out, these incidents resemble a case from long ago, one that took the life of his beloved fiance. In the process of investigating these murders, he comes across a couple of high school girls connected to the incidents. You'll see Reiji has some lighthearted moments with them, but that's just Karuna Shoujo's way of luring you into this false sense of security before hitting you with tragedy. What's worse is that he's searching all over these grisly graphic corpses hoping to find a clue that'll lead him closer to the killer, but that can only happen if someone dies. That creeping, haunting anxiety is a feeling that will latch onto you this entire visual novel. What's really interesting though is that this game isn't just about solving a mystery, it seeks to really dive into each character's emotional insecurity. Securities. Not just how each person reacts to the deaths of the people close to them, but their personal issues and mental hangups. Even Reiji himself has to confront those feelings of regret, guilt, and loneliness. Everyone is trapped in that shell that continues to torment them. And I believe that's what makes up the beauty of Karo no Shoujo. This isn't about the decisive capture of the killer or the gruesome depictions of its victims, but the deeper psychological hangups and the emotions within its characters in this detective mystery. However, if you're 
you're looking for something that will mess with your head, or rather, watch someone else go insane, this is the title you want to check out. Introducing Chaos Head Noah. Being the first installment of the science adventure series, Chaos Head Noah is a bold approach given how pathetic the main character is. Takumi Nishijo is a shut-in otaku taken to the extreme, a shy, timid, withdrawn high school kid that plays MMOs, obsesses over anime, and basically lives in his room. And this actually makes him the perfect character. He may be an utterly repulsive, misogynistic, and cringeworthy person, truly divisive among plenty of readers. However, Chaos and Noah shows exactly what happens if you take a man like him and push him to the absolute limit. With the unusual serial murders happening all around him, the unnerving feeling that he might be targeted next, and Takumi being the antisocial stuttering wreck that he is, seeing the deterioration of his mental state is quite the experience. You get to see his delusional imaginations. They are very wild what-if scenarios that you can actually pick from. They reflect both his escapist fantasies, his attempt at hiding from the real world, and his worst possible nightmares, the result of his built-up paranoia and fears. As he continues to voice his panic, Chaos and Noah then does its absolute best job to capitalize on that through its presentation. It's gritty and intimate, one that showcases the mental struggles of a person like Takami, while also using it to blur the lines between reality and fantasy in this horror surrealist way. While Takami is the extreme form of a socially awkward, weak-willed individual, there are aspects of his behavior and thought process that some people may find a bit relatable, as uncomfortable as that sounds. However, his personality is an important aspect to keep in mind as you read through Chaos Head Noah. Yes, it may be a delusional psychological horror with a sci-fi mystery plotline, but it's also a journey of Takemi's psyche and characterization, seeing whether he crumbles under his hallucinations or sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Again, a bold move to feature such an unlikable, divisive main character in their first title. But it's a great one to kick off the science adventure series. Now, most of the ones I've mentioned before are tame. Yeah, I know. These are tame. But if you want something absolutely messed up, something so extreme due to how f***ed up it is, may I recommend Gore Screaming Show. This is your warning because Gore Screaming Show operates in the erotic horror realm, where you'll see some horrifyingly graphic, disturbing images in its bad endings. We're talking the most messed up depictions of Arrow Gore in the most chaotic, psychedelic way possible. All thanks to this small girl and her half clown, half machine devil from hell named Gore Screaming Show. It's very grisly, involving scenes of mutilation, non consexual sex, and outright pure violence. After all, this was developed by Blackside and directed by Ueda Matawo, someone who shows no hesitation in displaying some messed up scenarios. And yet, despite what you may think, Gore Screaming Show isn't just a psychological horror thriller trip, but it's also an intimate character-focused romance. With our main character Koji moving into his old hometown, he reconnects with his classmates. But once he comes across a young girl named Yuka, Koji and his female classmates begin to experience terrifying situations, with Yuka fully intending to break the girls. She and her bestest pal, Gore Screaming Show, shows no hesitation whatsoever in creating chaotic delusions to terrorize them. Really, what better way to eliminate your love rivals than to gaslight and guilt trip them into revealing their deepest insecurities? and then kill them. All the heroines we meet go through some pretty emotionally traumatizing stuff. However, it's because of Yuka that they are able to work through their issues together with Kyoji. Gore Screaming Show dives a lot more deeper beyond its gore and horror to prove itself as a great coming of age drama, if you can get past the more extreme explicit stuff. That said, I wouldn't fault you in any way if you were just solely interested in its metalist bad endings. And of course, Gore Screaming Show himself. He's quite the icon. And finally, my personal recommendation for a horror visual novel, a love story where cheating on a girl is the worst possible thing you can do. Introducing you and me and her, or alternatively, Totono. While it may appear as a simple romance visual novel, the most notable aspect of Totono is in its resemblance to the widely popular visual novel Doki Doki Literature Club. However, while Doki Doki Literature Club places a large focus on its shock value elements, Totono emphasizes its romantic love triangle 
Triangle story, similar to that of School Days, where one moment you're having a fun, wholesome time, and the next you're being held at knife point, desperate to escape. Stockholm Syndrome is a very real thing, guys, and I don't regret the choice I made at the end. Shinichi, who has drifted apart from his once close friend Miyuki, the most popular girl at school, has his life changed when the mysterious oddball Aoi attempts to kiss him. Miyuki intervenes, but Shinichi feels drawn to the lonely Aoi. The three bond together as a trio, but as the distance shortens between them all, hidden emotions surface and their friendship is tested. At first, Totono appears off by Aoi's rather cryptic appearance and actions, but then the story leads you on an engaging drama between the two love interests. Everything proceeds as expected, and then it dunks you right into the rabbit hole. This is a story that gets you fully invested, for what starts off as a normal romance turns into a thriller battle of wits against you and the visual novel, as it proceeds to call you out on your faults and bluffs. It really subverts your expectations where you don't expect it to, even more so if you're a fan of visual novels or dating sims in general, where it feels like the game is laughing at you. This is the one instance where you don't read the visual novel, it reads you. With every decision you make throughout the visual novel, you will be held accountable for those choices, and it won't hesitate to remind you of your actions. It punishes those acts and is brutal in doing so, but because you went through that experience, the visual novel speaks to you on a level far beyond anything you've ever read, which includes one scene in the 18 plus version that is so stunning, so unnerving, so uncomfortable, and yet boldly unique in its execution. You might come into Totsuno expecting a cute romance with a touch of unsettling horror, or you could be privy to all the secret hidden plot twists Totsuno has to offer. Either way, reading this story ends up becoming a deeply personal experience, as every single playthrough is entirely unique to each person reading. It. And it concludes on one of the best, outstanding ultimatums that Totono will force you to make. If you're looking for something truly unique with a lot of heart to it, check out You and Me and Her slash Totono arguably claimed the Bishoujo game to end all Bishoujo games. And those were five horror visual novel recommendations that I recommend you should check out. If you're looking for more recommendations, check out this video over here.